Now, welcome. Today, we're going to be looking more at the English language. And for some of you, we're going to start our journey as we look at parts of speech. Does that ring a bell to you? Parts of speech. When we hear parts of speech, it sounds like one of those terms in English that you know, you think you got, but you didn't quite get it. Oh my gosh, what is that again? What is that again? What is that again? Whenever you see, <coughs> excuse me, whenever you see the word heart of speech, just look at the words. Look at the name of the, 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 the concept that we're looking at. Heart of speech. Basically, what you're asked to tell me or what you are expected to know is that when you're looking at speech, speech can be written, speech can be spoken. So you have verbal and you have non-verbal communication, right? So when you hear parts of speech, you're also being asked to tell me what are the parts needed to speak? What are the parts needed to communicate, be it written or spoken. Make sense? So use that to help you remember what is expected of you when you see the term parts of speech. So what, what are parts of speech? So in the English language, words can be considered as the smallest elements that have distinctive meanings and these meanings are based on how they are used what is their purpose what do they do to the greater understanding and meaning of a thought of a sentence of a particular method or mode of communication right so based on their use and functions words are categorized into several types or called parts of speech so the several types are the various parts of speech does that make sense if it doesn't stick up in let me know just jot it down so by the time i have gone through the presentation you can let me know listen i'm lost i don't get it so as i go through Wherever you are unclear, make a point of it, and so I'll address it at the end. All right. So the parts of speech, they include the noun, the pronoun, the verb, the adverb, the adjective, the conjunction, the preposition, and the interjection. Is there anyone that you are not familiar with? Jot it down and let me know which one you didn't quite remember. So we have our nouns. We call this the naming, the naming part of speech. Nouns are naming words. It's the names that we assign to people, places, things, ideas, thoughts. Then we have verbs. Without verbs, we don't have our sentences because something has to be happening if we're going to be creating our thoughts, right? What happened? What are you expressing? And as we go forward or as you go forward, depending on whether or not I take you along this journey, a sentence has particular elements and it has the subject, it has the verb, and it has the object. So you see a sentence needs to have a verb and a verb is called the doing words. What is happening? What happened? What's the movement taking place, right? What's the relationship between the subject of the sentence and the thing that the, the verb is acting on, which is the object, the secondary 
part of the sentence. Well, let us not get confused. Let's just stick to verbs are action words. Good? Then we have our pronouns. What are our pronouns? No, with pronouns, they replace or they stand in place of the noun. So, for example, you can say, Kevin walks to the door. Kevin opened the door. Kevin went into the car. Kevin closed the gates. With pronouns, you will, re you will replace Kevin after Kevin, the noun is mentioned first. In all other instances where it is grammatical, you can replace Kevin with he. He is a pronoun. So Kevin opened the door. He went to the car. Then he went to open the gates. He, he, we're all referring to Kevin. Does that make sense? So that is the pronoun. And I'm going to go into them in detail, but we're just going through them quickly. An adverb. What is the adverb? Always look at the words, right? Look at the words. Have you ever heard the concept adjective? Yes. An adjective describes things, does it not? Right? So we have the adverb. What is the adverb? The adverb describes So adverbs, right, describe the verb. Does that make sense? Adverb. So we're going to look at adjectives. So adjectives describe nouns. Adjectives tell you how the thing is being done, how the person feels. It explains what is happening right? It's a description of a noun, right? So adjectives describe nouns. Adverbs, and think of the ad. When you think of the ad, think of adjectives. And if adjectives describe and you see adverb, it means that the verb is what is being described. That makes sense? Right, let's move on. Then we have or preposition. Then we have our prepositions. Prepositions basically tell us where the thing is happening. Right? Where is it taking place? What's the location? Make sense? So is it above? It is below? Is it beside? Is it underneath? Is it adjacent is it opposite to that is what a proposition is and again i'm going to go through them then we have our conjunctions okay two came off let's work with it we have our conjunctions yes now with our conjunctions our conjunctions holds our sentences together Make sense? So, he bought groceries at the supermarket. Then, he went to the gas station. He bought groceries and went to the gas station. The conjunction in that sentence would be and because we're connecting ideas together. And then lastly, we have our eighth part of speech and that is the interjection. When you hear the word in interjection, it's where emphasis is placed on a thought or a word or an idea. So you've heard of exclamation marks, right? So you exclaim, wow, that is beautiful. So wow would have the, the position of the interjection 
right? Because that's where the emphasis is, right? Oh my goodness. The interjection would be after, oh my goodness, because that's where we're explaining. That's where the emphasis comes in. Make sense? All right, so let's move on. So let us now get into details. So we are looking at our nouns. This part of speech refers to words that are used to name persons, things, animals, places, ideas, or events. Nouns are the simplest among the eight parts of speech, which is why they are the first ones to be taught to students in primary school. Just saying that to say that. So nouns, we usually start off with nouns because it's easier, right? We don't have to understand or know Okay, this is where this needs to be in this sentence. And is this a verb? Is this an adjective? Is this an adverb? Is this an interjection? Is this a preposition with a noun? If you see that it's a name, it's a name. Is it the name attached to a thing, a person, a place? Those are easy to identify. So we can always readily remember our nouns and readily identify nouns in a sentence, right? So for example, Tom Hanks is very versatile. The noun in this sentence would be what? Tom Hanks, because that's the name of a person, yes? Dogs can be extremely cute. Dogs would refer to an animal. The word dog refers to an animal. It is the name of an animal, make sense? It is my birthday. That's a thing, right? It's an event. So birthday in this sentence would be the noun because it's the name attached to the celebration of the day a person entered the world. It's a name attached to a thing, right? So birthday would be noun. Then we have different types of nouns, right? We have proper nouns that are very specific and they are identified by capital letters, right? So, for example, you can have a girl. Girls are everywhere. You have a boy. Boys are everywhere. But Yannick Brown is a specific girl. You're referring to a specific girl in that instance, right? So a proper noun always starts with a capital letter and refers to specific names of persons, places, or things. So you have many houses, right? You have many houses. But if you say the White House, you are referring to the presidential home of presidents in the United States of America. Yes? If you say, well, there are houses on that street or there are homes on that street. But if you say El Shaddai nursing home, that's a specific nursing home that you are referring to. Make sense? If you speak of a river, if you speak of a river, rivers are everywhere. I don't know which river you're talking about. But if you say the Rio Cobre River in Jamaica, I will know specifically which river you are referring to. And that is a proper noun. And it is usually, it is always, I should say, identified with the use of capital letters right? Because you're identifying something very precise, very specific, right? And then we have our common nouns. Common nouns are the opposites of proper nouns. 
These are just generic names, meaning anybody have it. Right? Of person, things, or places. So a river, a house, a table, a pen. But if I say big ballpoint pen, I'm referring to a specific pen. Make sense? If I say a um, pizza, it's just pizza. But if I say shake his pizza, it's a specific pizza. But if I say pizza, it's just pizza. Make sense? If I say TV series, okay, it can be any TV series. But I can say Green Leaves on Netflix, that's a specific TV series. And then we have our verbs. This is the most important part of a speech for without a verb, a sentence would not exist. A sentence would not exist. So you have phrases, and that is why we have a distinction between phrases and sentences, because phrases may have elements that are absent. However, with a sentence, there must be a subject, a verb, and an object. So you cannot have a sentence without a verb, right? The sentence would not exist without a verb. Simply put, this is a word that shows an action, physical or mental, because you can think. Thinking. That's, that's an action, right? I can run. That's a physical action. Does that make sense? Great. The store, as usual, the stormtroopers missed their shot. So, where would the verb be in this sentence? Missed, right? This is what happened. They missed their shot. And here we have the italized word expresses the action of the subject stormtroopers. So the stormtroopers, what did they do? They missed their shot. Then we have our pronouns. Our pronouns. A pronoun is a part of a speech which functions as a replacement for a noun. Some examples of pronouns are I, it, he, mine, his, hers, we, they, theirs, and ours. Janice is a very stubborn child. She just stared at me when I told her to stop. The largest slice is mine. We are number one. So we start off with Janice is a very stubborn child. She just stared at me when I told her to stop. So the pronouns add a seamlessness to the sentence, to the thought. So instead of saying, Janice is a very stubborn child, Janice just stared at me, and when I told Janice to stop, she continued. Or let me read it exactly as it is there, if we did not have pronouns. So it would have been, Janice is a very stubborn child, Janice just stared at me, when I told Janice to stop. You see the seamlessness that the pronoun adds, right? And then we have, we are number one. So instead of saying Janice, Yannick, Kevin, Asia, Araya, Mavis, Lloyd, instead of outlining every single person, we can just say, we. Make sense? The largest slice is mine. So instead of saying the largest slice is Yannick, 
because do you remember those cartoons where we had um, the cavemen and they would say, like they would say, Bob wants banana, Bob wants food, Bob, you know, they, they refer to themselves in with proper pronouns as they speak and we consider that to be a primitive uneducated uneducated way of communicating so we use pronouns we use pronouns to replace the nouns right it adds a seamlessness to the sentence right and remember when we're talking about parts of speech we're looking at the elements of a language that when they come together allows us to communicate effectively to communicate seamlessly the largest slice is mine mine is the pronoun we are number one we is the pronoun janice is a very stubborn child as we continue to speak of janice we replace the word janice with she and her make sense good all right Continue. then we have next or adverbs just like adjectives adverbs are also used to describe words but the difference is that adverbs describe adjectives verbs or another adverb right so we would have looked at this in the introduction but as i said we would have gotten more specific so the different types of adverbs we have adverb of manner this refers to how something happens or how an action is done how it manner how is it done how right in what manner was it said? How was it said? Example, Annie danced gracefully. That's describing how Annie danced, right? But she could have also danced terribly. Annie danced terribly. Make sense? It's telling you how Annie danced. The word gracefully again tells us how Annie danced. You have the adverb of time. This states when something happened or when it was done. So it could have happened yesterday. It could have happened last night. It could have happened in the morning. It could have happened in the evening. When did it happen? Right? So you are describing the time because maybe in that instance the time is important and it must be described so when you say i i am going to expect that you give me my money tomorrow when tomorrow comes you're going to want your money and you're going to in, ensure that you outline that you say tomorrow so you don't think that it's next week or next month or next year you say tomorrow so that is why it is important to describe or be specific right when you are looking at descriptions of verbs or adverbs or even adjectives you will pay me tomorrow the verb in that sentence is pay but as important as the word pay tomorrow is equally worth knowing because you must understand when you are to pay me make sense then we have our next adverb we have adverb of place adverb of 
place. This tells us something about where something happens or where something is done. If you can't find your book, which is a situation I'm experiencing now. Why is it you can't find the book? I don't know. I looked everywhere. So you understand that I didn't just come and lift up a, a desk and say, oh, I checked here, it's not there. I'm telling you that I looked everywhere. Make sense? Then we have adverb of degree. This states the intensity or the degree to which a specific thing happens or is done. So how much of it happened? To what extent did it happen? How much happened? That's the degree, the intensity. Was it a little bit? What is that? Was it a lot? The child is very talented. That's showing you the degree. That's showing you that the, the child is very talented. So the intensity is high. Make sense? Make sense? All right. So it shows you the degree. I'm pausing when I'm hearing the noises. I'm not sure if, if you're hearing all of it. So I pause so we don't have the competition. To what degree is the child talented? Very talented. We could have said somewhat talented. Right? She's somewhat talented. Kind of. Kind of, sort of. That's the degree. It's on the lower level. But when we say very, it's higher. So we're seeing the intensity. How talented is the child? Is it a little or is it a lot? Then we have our adjectives. Our adjectives are parts of speech that describe a noun or a pronoun, right? Because not because you have moved from using a proper or common noun and have replaced it with a pronoun does it mean that you're not going to still describe it. Right? So that is why you still describe your, your known and the pronoun because it's still a known, right? A pronoun is still a known. It's just that the known is replaced with specific words. Make sense? Adjectives can specify the quality, the size, and the number of nouns or pronouns. The carvings are intricate. The carvings are intricate. When we say intricate, when we say intricate, we mean detailed. The carvings are detailed, right? So you are going to see there that the quality of the carvings would be detailed, right? Then you also have the size. Wow, that donut is huge. Huge is the quality of the donut. The size of the donut, sorry. The size of the donut. What's the size of the donut? It is huge. Maybe it could impact the quality as well. Who knows? All right? But uh, in this instance, we're going to say a huge donut is, this, is just speaking to size. But maybe for some, if it is a huge donut, that's a quality, that's a quality donut for me. Make sense? So, the prepositions now. Bring these up. This part of a speech basically refers to words 
that speci specify location or location in time. Examples of prepositions are above, below, throughout, outside, before, near, and since. Mekhi is under the bed. Mekhi is near the bed. Right? Those are prepositions that specify location. So, we have our conjunctions. Now, what are conjunctions? The conjunction is the part of speech which joins words, phrases, or clauses together. Right? Examples of conjunctions are, read it with me, and, yet, but, for, nor, or and so so this cup of tea is delicious and very soothing what does it say read it with me this cup of tea is very delicious and very soothing so you're seeing where the words are being joined together because as we can see the conjunctions joins words and phrases together and this is an example of where the words are being drawn um, drawn together and the words specifically are delicious and soothing but what is also present here is what the adverb and where's the adverb can anybody identify the adverb can you identify the adverb very it's the it's 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 the degree right it is the degree to which the tea is soothing remember we looked at that is it very soothing somewhat soothing slightly soothing right so we're seeing the adverb in place and i'm sure as we have progressed through the slides and you have seen the sentences i'm sure you're seeing all of the the parts of speech coming out in the sentences right and so we have the example now of phrases being pulled together so kyoko has to start all over again because and here's the rest of the phrase she didn't follow the professor's instructions. These are where phrases now are being drawn together. We're seeing the phrases now, right? Kiyoki has to start all over again. Because, and the conjunction is because, she didn't follow the professor's instructions. Right? Homer always wanted to join the play, but, and that is the conjunction in the sentence, he didn't have the guts to audition. Right? And this is where we see example of phrases being, being drawn together or joined to ensure that we can communicate the full thought. And then we have our interjections. And this one should be as easy as the nouns, right? Because there's a symbol that you look for to be able to identify that it is an interjection, right? And that symbol is the exclamation mark right some people say the exclamation points but culturally you know when you see the little line and the dots exclamation mark or exclamation points this part of a speech refers to words which, which express emotions since interjections are commonly used to convey strong emotions they are usually followed by an exclamation point exclamation mark 
I said I did. Ouch! That must have hurt. Ouch! We're seeing the interjection there. Hooray! We won! Entire sentence. Hooray! We won! Hey! I said enough. And you would see that. It's just the word that would be the interjection because it's the word hey that is followed by the exclamation. While hooray we won, the entire sentence has been the exclaim. This is what we are we are shouting. This is what we are emotive about. The fact that we won. Hooray! We won. Right? So these are the parts of speech. I am going to encourage you to go over the PowerPoint so you can familiarize yourself with the concepts again, right? So that you are able to complete the activity. Alrighty? So stay safe, stay far, stay clean. I will see you soon.